Hello, my name is William, the avid reader, and today I am reviewing Journey to the Center of the Earth, written by Jules Verne in 1864. So this is a very old book, over um, 150 years old, and it's a science fiction book. And it's recommended uh, by Michael Crichton, interestingly enough, so he says An extraordinary book. This is nothing so rare as the chance to take an impossible journey and to b believe it so powerfully that we wonder if we will make it out alive. That's magic and that's a gift, Wolverine's gift. Michael Crichton, Daily Te Telegraph. So, there are, um, there are very, it's a short book, it's less than 200 pages long and the letters are big compared to the page. It, it, it can be read quickly and uh, there aren't that many characters so the main characters are um, it's from the point it's written from the point of view of Axel so he's an orphan who's been living with his um, uncle Otto Linde, Lindebrock who's also a, pro, uh, a professor in uh, at Hamburg in uh, Germany I believe and uh, Axel has been in practice his, uh, his uh, uncle's own son for a while and Lind Lindenbrock finds this um, piece, this uh, clue that he believed by uh, Arne Saknesem that uh, the, you can get to the center of the earth so he decides that they should find a journey to the center of the earth and they go to um, they travel to Iceland and go to the Snaffelskjöld volcano, an inactive volcano, and they go with their uh, guide Hans Bjelke, who's a Danish-speaking speaking Icelander, and he's very calm and reserved and doesn't speak a lot, but he's courageous. He keeps the all the situations and all the problems cool, and. Day three, they start exploring the. They start exploring the subterranean, so the it starts by they're walking down, and they're, they're climbing down using uh, an interesting rope technique. At one one point, they start running out of water. And uh, they they're starting of uh, becoming weak and weaker by first. And Axel, Axel starts to lose it. You know, he starts to become very weak and he cannot move anymore. He just stops. And same is true, I think, with his uncle Otto. But then a uh, you know, great uh, guide Hans, he um, actually finds, he thinks he hears a source of water. So he uses a, pick, a pickaxe and he starts tapping at it. And he, after one hour, he successfully gets uh, out a, a warm stream of water. It fills the room and it's very hot, so it hurts hands and actually temporarily. But now they have a source of water. And uh, then another uh, problem, and this is specifically related to Axel, that he loses himself, and he's and he's lost for uh, three days. And while he's lost, uh, his uncle and Hans has have found this uh, open open cave, and they found this. Uh, they have found this sea, this large sea. I mean, it's uh, interesting, yeah. They've also found uh, woods and... Uh, right, before I can, I'll get to that later. And Axel, through the screaming of echoes, he find, finds his way back, but he stumbles and hurts himself. And he rests a bit, and then they start. They go and start uh, exploring the woods and the giant mushrooms they have found. And then uh, Hans, uh, who also has de dexterity, so uh, builds a raft. They go on it, and they go to use the re they use the sea to try to get closer to the center of the earth. And um, all this time, the temperature has risen slowly, so it's not that hot yet. And um, while there, uh, they see uh, they uh, they f try to fish, and they pick up um, a fish, 
which is actually an extinct species, they notice, and they fish a lot, so they get plenty of fish, they need food. And, um, but then they get to witness this uh, fight between uh, uh, their hybrid animals, but uh, the main traits, you've got the crocodile and he's got the some other features, but a crocodile and a snake, big, a big crocodile and a big snake get battle. And the crocodile wins, and they never attack actually the rats. But anyway, since they're so large, they make waves, so they, the people almost fall uh, out of the rats several times. They mention specifically 20 times. And then the next problem becomes that there is a sea storm. And it goes on like this for a day or two. And then they get uh, washed ashore to uh, rocks. And uh, this sea has been, was named uh, the Edenbrook uh, Sea. And another, a couple other things were named. I don't remember in which order, but you've got Port Gretel and Axel Island. And they start, uh, they start exploring this part, I think, while uh, while, while Hans is repairing, and I think if I remember correctly, they found out that they're, they're, they've been washed back where they were. But they also found a human skeleton, and then they get to see, and they get to more woods, and they get to see mammoths, and a giant uh, human-like creature. And then they they both turn around and get out of there. But then they f find this um, smaller cave, more entry. But they do not explore it. But they can see it's the initials of uh, Hans Nexen. So they go back to uh, Hans. They rest up a bit. And they put dynamite there to uh, blow it up so they can see what's in there. But when they do that, when they're in the raft, something, uh, it just goes to just goes to hell and they start going rushing down the mountain with all the the with all the water going in and it becomes wider and wider and he sees that the walls are hot actually and then they realize that the, an eruption is going on in this eruption there is a volcano eruption going on and uh, keep in mind while all this traveling they've been traveling hundreds and hundreds of kilometers so uh, they originally were in Iceland and now when they get out there and they are very weak and they go around birds but they uh, come out of the uh, volcano in Sicily the strong they come out of the Stromboli volcano in Sicily and manage to survive and they learn this from uh, an Italian voice and uh, yeah, they, and they didn't manage to get to the center of the earth. And you've had this compass problem, but they sort that out in the end because they've seen that the compass was messed up, so nothing was weird, nothing was breaking the rules of science exactly. And they traveled back to Hamburg. They become heroes. Um, Axel me meets up with his love interest again, Gretel. And you've got M Marta the maid uh, gets to see them. And this trip took, uh, this journey took 12 weeks. And Hans, the silent and heroic Hans, he returns to Iceland and Axel thinks that he will visit him again later. And um, Lidenbrock becomes a, a great figure, re very respected. He writes his work, he pub publishes his works. It's translated in many languages and it's uh, published in some interesting uh, magazines and newspapers and yeah but the book ends there and it takes place in 1863 and as I say it was a short book but it was um, it's also a creative read and I would say quite, quite relaxing you get to see explore how the subterranean could be and this is science fiction and it builds up slowly, so the first third is just building up before the, uh, building up the story before they actually go into the, the do the journey inside. But then there are all the 
I'm there. there mo most of the book uh, is, takes place in the subterranean. You even got these different obstacles that they meet. And uh, Axel thinks about Gretel. And they keep trying to find a trace of the possible previous explorer, Arnold Saxon. But uh, yes, that's the story. It's an interesting but short read. I would recommend it. It's, it doesn't take a long time to read, so you can read it whenever you want. It, you can, you may, if, you have a, if you have a few hours uh, to spare, you can read this in a day. So yes, good book, even if it's old. So this was uh, the Avid Reader's Review of a Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. And I will see you guys next time.